first of all, I just want to say it's great to see so many people here today. I think we've all missed this type of event, and I think uh, credit to Jane and the team for, for putting this event on, so thank you very much. In terms of introductions, my name's Chris Stock. I'm the Managing Director of Percipient. We're a Sage business partner, and we focus on implementing cloud-based integrated finance systems for, for our hospitality customers. I'm pleased to be joined by the guys today, so I'll, I'll let them introduce themselves. Perhaps, uh, Mark, you probably don't need to do that. I think uh, we're all aware of you, so if we start with Stuart. Thanks, Chris. Hey, my name is Stuart Houston. I'm the Finance Director for RBH Hospitality Management. We are one of the UK's leading hotel management companies, trade about 50 hotels from Aberdeen down to Southampton and everywhere in between. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jan Janssen. I'm the Group Operational Controller for Virgin Limited Edition, so Richard Branson's uh, private limited uh, collection of hotels, currently with, uh, with eight properties. OK, thank you. So we have just over half an hour for the session today. So obviously, Mark's just done his, um, done his keynote as well. So if you do have any questions as we go through, please do save them up, and, and we can ask them at the end. So, Mark, I'm going to start with you, if that's okay. I'm aware you've just been talking for 10 minutes. So, if we, if we get you out of the way first, then you can relax, have a drink of water. I <laughs> uh, won't say nod off. But, um, so, perhaps, obviously, we just listened to your keynote, and perhaps a broad question initially. I've heard people say in the industry, um, probably 2023 is going to be that recovery date or year. Do you see that? Others are perhaps more skeptical. You know, what's, what's the view that, that you see? And, and um, so I, I think my, my thesis is nothing is going to be that straightforward. That is an average uh, position, isn't it? And uh, what we're going to see, I think, is a number of businesses, which we already know, um, which have bounced back very, very quickly, and a number that are going to take much longer. And a lot of that, of course, is going to depend on actions way beyond our control, um, you know, international travel being the most important. Um, the real consideration, I think, is going to be, and, and I'm sure we'll talk about this, but the, you know, costs are rising. Um, we know that's a challenge. Uh, we know that uh, we weren't in a perfect position coming into the pandemic in lots of cases, lots of businesses, and we know that we have to shore up balance sheets. So um, there is a risk, a very real risk, that sits across a number of businesses over the next 18 months, but there will be a lot of people who can be successful and will race back quicker. So I think it's, it's understanding your market, it's being able to manage change and those paradoxes that I talked about, uh, and then that should equip you for success. Okay. And then perhaps if you look on a, on a positive note, are there any areas that you see are showing signs of recovery quicker? Any perhaps then, or then wrapped around the question, maybe any initiatives your, some of your customers have put in place to, to accelerate that? Um, yes, yeah, so I th clearly anyone that has a staycation uh, type hotel uh, has an opportunity, um, no doubt is struggling more than anyone else with uh, labour supply and there's a, a challenge there. Um, initiatives. So I think those initiatives really come around uh, all the things that I talked about uh, previously, going through people, really evaluating purpose and what that means for customers and otherwise, and the message around trying to uh, get to customers. You know, one of the key things is going to be every time you've got someone in your venue, in your building, you've got to make the most of them. And that, that sounds cold, hard and you know, brutal in some ways, but ultimately the pound that's walked through the door, anything you can extract from them is going to be worth a lot more than trying to acquire another one. So um, ultimately, the more you can do to look after those that are with you, and, and upsell seems like a horrible word, and I, I, know, I come up as an accountant, but ultimately, people at the moment are willing to spend when they have the right experience and they get the right service level, and we need to absolutely capitalise on that. Okay. And then perhaps then on the negative side, any areas? You've seen people struggle. I mean, it might be a common theme as we run through this, but it's... Um, well, look, if... Um, well, where do I see a real challenge? Some hotels are going to struggle to get the cash that they need to both manage their financing and look at capex spend. And um, while development is likely to slow a little, uh, in a lot of areas, there is appetite to invest in new product. I think the budget sector... Uh, and it, it eventually the high-end sector are going to be doing extremely well. But in, if you're in the middle, you can't quite define who you are uh, and who you're appealing to, and you have a capex shortfall, you need to spend some money, then I think that is going to be a, a challenging area. Okay. And then finally, perhaps to yourself, and then we'll let you grab that drink of water. Any, any tips from you as we move into 2022? Obviously, I'll listen, I'll listen to your keynote there, but any sort of key pieces of advice that you might be giving to your customers? 
Um, I, uh, so uh, two things, I think. Number one is, uh, I think we've gone beyond the idea that all the skills that you need are, like, are going to be in your own organisation. I think that's going to be tough. Um, you know, some, without wanting to overplug it, there are some great exhibitors <coughs> out here um, who can help, and it's going to be a time to try and get as much help as, as you can. And secondly, um, we are going to have to be more flexible. Things that we think will work, things that we think are good strategies may not be the right thing for our businesses. So all the focus really should be on what KPIs do we need in the short term to be able to evaluate whether our current strategy is working or not. And the more flexible you can be, and it's very, you have to be very, very brave to be able to say, we tried that and it didn't quite work and we need to try something else. But really supporting people to try something, evaluate and then change if necessary is going to be good. I'm Mr. Quite Chairman, talented. sorry to interrupt you, but one, one or two in the, at the extremities of the room are struggling to hear you, so could we ask you all to speak up a little bit more, if that's okay? Apologies for the interruption. No problem. And then perhaps from a technology standpoint, are you, see, have you, are you seeing customers invest? Is that... um, y yes, although I think it's fair to say um, it might not have had the same priority that it would have done previously, and I think it depends entirely on the type of um, asset and hotel as to how quickly that spend will be prioritised going forward. Okay. No, thank you. Okay, Stuart Shorten, now if I, can, if I can turn to you. We spoke a couple of weeks ago, and you said something to me that, that really resonated with, with me and what we do. You said one of the focus areas for your business at the moment was harnessing the power of information. Can you give us a bit of a background into that and what it is that you're doing? Yes, absolutely. So. Historically, we've been very strong at integrating our finance package with our business intelligence tool. So we use a Sun accounting package and Cognos business intelligence. So that has allowed us to stand apart in the market, particularly the information we're giving owners, uh, forward-looking budgeting, forecasting. But over the last 18 months, where we've really identified a, a requirement is to harness the commercial information that's available to us. So when uh, Mark spoke earlier about the data lakes, you know, the amount of information that's in the PMS and the market intelligence from OTA Insights, SDR, Hot Stats, eh, marketing tools, social media, it's garnering that information and really harnessing the power of that. I think historically our industry has been quite lazy because you've had budget and then if budget slips you just defer to last year eh, and that's the information you've looked at. But of course now there is no last year and we're referring to 2019 as as Mark says, as if it's a, a kind of utopia year. In some instances, it may have been, but a lot of cases, it wasn't. Uh, and one thing we can be certain is our cost base is going to be far higher uh, next year than it was in 2019. So we need to harness the uh, commercial information in particular to uh, really get the best out of that information and, and make educated business decisions that can't always rely on a prior year comparison. Okay. And um, so you've got quite a large portfolio as well. Can you tell us a little bit about the hotels that you've got in your portfolio and how you've kind of structured your finance teams? Yeah, so we've got uh, 50 hotels throughout the UK, with 46 trading hotels, four hotels in, in pre-opening. Uh, we stretch from, as I said earlier, Aberdeen, uh, right down to Southampton, and then almost every location in between. Uh, we, we operate hotels with all the major brands, so Hilton, Marriott, IHG, uh, Accor, Wyndham. We also operate unbranded hotels and different classifications of hotels from upper upscale luxury. So we've just opened the West End in uh, London, St Paul's, uh, which is a, a great property to limited service, uh, Hodden Expresses, Hamptons and unbranded properties. So each property has a different requirement on the finance uh, area. So we operate really two, two different models which work for us. We have a centralised team uh, in Glasgow, it's a shared service concept, so purchase ledger, management accountants, statutory accountants. And we use that model for the more limited or focused service hotels. Okay. Uh, so there's real cost efficiencies and quality of data efficiencies by consolidating and doing it centrally, uh, where the hotels either maybe don't have the justification from a, for a team on property, uh, because there's not enough complexity or the risk levels, financial risk levels are relatively low, uh, little cash and, and limited services. Uh, so in that, we would implement a centralised uh, model, economies of scale, processes, efficiencies and training. In our more complex properties, we have finance team on site. 
And then what this enables us to do is, is really have a business partnering approach. We have a kind of trained and qualified financial controller who can partner the general manager and other HODs on property, but also have the other controls and processes. So particularly businesses that are high in cash, you know, so we you know, good strong cash controls. We have a, a lot of labour in some of our bigger properties, so you know, insight into your labour management and working with HODs and, and managing from that. And we have that flexibility to work with the owners to figure out what is the most efficient from a cost point of view and also in enhancing the profitability of the, profit, the property. So it's not always about what is the lowest cost structure you can put in. You know, we truly believe that the finance structure and a good finance structure will enhance the overall profitability of the, of the hotel by educating the kind of commercial and, and other HOD members of the team. Okay. No, thank you. And obviously, recruitment and talent is a big issue for the industry at the moment. How are you finding it? The challenges are you facing? And what we spoke earlier, what initiatives perhaps have you got in place to, to yeah, combat that? Yeah, I mean, it's been massively, massively challenging. So, so roles that were challenging before pandemic, before Brexit, have just become even more so, specifically around kitchen, chef uh, skills, F&B in general. Housekeeping has been one of the most challenging areas. Uh, and kind of kind of service staff, bar service staff. So retention has been a massive, massive element for us at RBH. We've put in a lot of processes with a real focus on health and well-being, you know, particularly mental health through the pandemic, you know, really kind of looking at those areas. We've enhanced our communication and, if anything, over-communicated to our staff. So we use a, a platform through, through our HR system rather than email, so it's uh, full of engage. Every member of staff who works in the hotel or the management company can log on to the app and see the communications that are getting posted on that system. So it really allows us to you know, ensure that everybody is getting the same message. Uh, we're looking at you know, rates of pay, as, every, as everybody is, but, but pay is not always the answer. You know, I think as a great believer that you need to enhance the, the experience of, of the staff you know, every one of our hotels has signed up to the Hotelers Charter, which is a fantastic thing. It's looking like, you know, posting rotas in advance, giving people notice of when they're going to work and how they're going to work and giving the flexibility. You know, a, a huge element of, through the pandemic is workers coming in and reassessing their lifestyle. And, you know, unfortunately, in hotels, we not, can't very often work from home. So we need to, you know, have other adaptability to make make the experience uh, as pleasurable as possible, and it really shouldn't be all about pay. It has to be about, you know, the, the staff enjoying their workplace and, and wanting to work for their company. And we are massive on culture in RBH, uh, and it's one of our big focus. Yeah, I think that's something we see as well in terms of the type of people coming into the workforce now. Technology plays a key part in that, and having outdated technology is no longer acceptable either for staff or, or yeah. customers as well, really. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And perhaps finally then for yourself, as obviously as we head into 2022, we kind of asked Mark the question, what do you see in the industry and then perhaps anything you've got in place to, as you head into next year? Yeah. I mean, I think fr from a finance point of view, first and foremost, there's some big ticket items happening next year. So PSD2 is finally going to arrive, looks like in March. Uh, it's been delayed for a couple of years, so that's going to be a big change in terms of the technology and uh, payment services. So a big focus on preparing all our hotels from that. Uh, we are we're actually implementing an a accounting package upgrade, which will be a big element for our, our finance. But in a more broader sense, I think some of our businesses are recovering quicker than others, but every single one is going to be experiencing cost pressure. You know, so it's how you manage and try and limit that cost pressure, you know, right from the top of the P&L, so your labour cost, right through your P&L. Uh, utilities in particular at the moment is off the chart. You know, we're, we're fortunate that we've got most of our hotels uh, on future contracts through to the end of 2022, 2023, but the ones that have come out of contract are experiencing 100, 150% increase from, from prior levels, uh, trying to get a utility contract right now. So it's, it's understanding that cost space and understanding what demands are in the market to offset it. So when we, we're quite often speaking as a business and an industry right now about looking back to 2019, but actually 2019 revenues are probably not going to be high enough in some instances. So we, so we really, really need to look at every opportunity, as Mark says, really maximise every opportunity. Uh, and I definitely agree with your point. It's if you're going to fail, fail fast. Fail fast, learn from it, move on. 
uh, and try something again. And don't be afraid to try. You know. Okay. No, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so Jan, I'll, I'll turn to you for me. You're one of our key recipient customers, so it's great to have you here with us today. Um, I think you made the decision prior to the pandemic to sort of modernise your finance system and mm -hmm. your back office. So can you tell us a little bit about that decision and, and the process that it was involved? Yeah, I think where we came from, I think, was a growing sense of frustration, if you will, where we found ourselves in a position every month trying to put reports together and it would take us longer and longer and longer up to what, a week, week and a half to put any sort of decent uh, P&L together. Our, uh, our portfolio, it's eight hotels spread over seven different countries, seven different currencies. So it is a quite complex, although all the hotels in itself are all very small, anywhere between nine and 25 bedrooms. So nothing uh, too big, but the, the actual operations, some of the estates are very big. They come with either wineries or a big uh, game, uh, game reserve. So yeah, the operations are big, but the hotels in itself are small. Then at the end of every month where we realized, you know, we don't have information, we don't have any direct answers as to how is our restaurant in, in France doing, how is our hotel occupancy in Morocco, how does that look over the next few months. It, it was getting increasingly difficult to get all of that information uh, instantly available. The information was obviously there, but to actually put anything together, that became horrendously difficult. When you then look at all the properties, the size that they were, they were all operating on their own finance system. So we were looking at about three or four different finance systems altogether and trying to consolidate any of that into something meaningful that took us forever. And then at some point, we have been building this collection now for what over the last, or the first 15 years of, uh, of the, starting in 2000. If you add a single property to it, it, it doesn't justify all of a sudden making a big jump to a new system. But when I think the time in 2018 came where we stepped back and looked and think, you know, what, what we're doing at the moment doesn't make too much sense anymore. We now really have to go and, and find a solution that works in seven countries with seven different currencies with a lot of intercompany requirements that we have. And that's effectively where our journey started. Uh, we didn't do that alone. We hired, uh, uh, I think, Avenue 9 to help us explore the market. And then eventually we ended up with, uh, with Sage X3. Okay. And we often find with hoteliers, perhaps the finance system is the hardest spend to justify. You know, quite rightly, money spent on, on guest facing um, technology. Mm -hmm. How did you go about justifying that spend? I think it, it, it was that sense of not be, I wouldn't say not being able to run your company because you know full well, especially in a smaller organization, what, what happens and what doesn't happen, but to actually be able to, to, uh, to put some proper reports together with KPIs where you are able to make business decisions based on information, not about just hearsay information, not just solid, solid data. We had a PMS, we had separate finance systems, but nothing was interconnected, so we were not collecting any, any decent data and when we wanted to do any uh, analysis on, for example, the, the, the lunch and, and dinner spends in one of our restaurants, it took me the best part of two weeks to put anything decent together, instead of now, uh, where you have everything ready at the, at the touch of a button. So I think there was that argument, uh, being able to tell uh, our executive team and say, guys, if we want to run our hotel chain better, we have to have information to actually do it. Also, the, the, the compliance part to be able to, to report and make sure that in every single country we're compliant with the local regulations. Uh, we didn't have any central oversight from our, from our office in Hammersmith. It was, we couldn't, in some instances, even log in into the, into the local system. So, yeah, it was difficult. And I think that, that made the decision very much easier. Yeah, but money is usually spent on our properties, on our guest experience, and rightfully so. But in the end, you do need a proper system to run your actual business, to be able to have that information readily available. Yeah, okay. And obviously during the pandemic and as we come out of it, that spend to, would have been perhaps harder mm -hmm. to justify. Do you think, if you look back now, do you think, if, if you justify that spend now, would, yeah. would, it, would you do it differently? Would it be the same? Would you still invest? Would you? Oh yes, you no, I think the, the, that would very, from our point of view, that would have been a very clear yes. I think, well, hindsight is obviously wonderful, but given that we were lucky enough to, to transition before the, the pandemic and be able to collect a vast amount of data uh, before the pandemic hit, I think we were well positioned to actually review 
our entire business structure and see how do we actually get through this pandemic. I think if we wouldn't have had that, it would have, of course, we would have made it, but it would have taken us way longer and probably be way more expensive to get where we are now. So yes, we would have definitely do it again, because again, the place where we came from, there was no escape of not doing it. Okay. And then if, if you look at the project, so our consultants did some great locations. Yeah. I didn't, unfortunately, <laughs> they wouldn't let me go. But uh, any lessons, any, any advice you would give on someone embarking on a similar journey now from your experience? Um, yeah, I, I think it's really uh, be flexible. Understand your business and if you go through that journey, it, you find out that you can't capture everything from, from the start. I think we have eight, eight unique locations and every location has its own requirements. And you come to find out that, that, especially throughout the locations that we have, people have different skill sets. So yes, some might be more advanced in, in using technology than others. So you have to really adapt as you go along almost. So it's, it's not like we had a very, we had a very clear uh, sort of goal as to what the end state should look like, but to actually get there, that actually that wasn't that, that wasn't necessarily a straight line. That <laughs> it was quite a, a road to uh, to travel and actually adapt uh, almost every step of the way to the, uh, to actually make that work. Okay, obviously a lot changed since you went live. Yeah. Have you had to make have you any projects and anything you've changed recently? Anything you've done that, that that's changed dramatically from from where you started? Oh, I think the the. The state of, of where we are now compared to two years, ago, two years ago is a world of difference. I think we're now even going further into integrating our, uh, our PMS system more, even more so with, uh, with CHX3. It is really trying to capture sort of every little bit of information that we can, not because we need it every day, but simply if, if you collect it now, you have at least something to look back to afterwards and actually do that analysis if you at some point in the future decide I want to do some proper analysis on any of our business parts you have to start from fresh if that information is not available so we decided to try and capture as much as possible that is anything from from uh, market segments to geostats to uh, hours as required uh, hours worked FTEs and uh, utilities used so any and all business uh, KPIs that help us run our business, we will capturing and start to capture more even in the, into the future. Okay. And obviously you've got, perhaps looking more generally there in the day-to-day -day role that you have, mm -hmm. you've got locations all around the world. Are you seeing different challenges in different locations? Is, is, there, is there a common theme? Yeah, as, as I think the, the previous speaker said as well, the cost, cost of logistics are rising. We have, uh, as you may or may not know, some lovely properties in Necker Island and the neighboring island Mosquito. Those are one of those prime examples where logistics in getting anything to Ireland is horrendously expensive or has become horrendously expensive. So that is a, an item that we're looking into to actually have the whole procurement from start to finish, so purchase to pay, to have that all set up in Sage where we can actually do anything from requesting anything out of our warehouse to containerization, getting items shipped to Miami to put into a container and then shipped to, uh, to Necker and any sort of cost savings that we can make there, any sort of the, the cuts on traveling to and from the island that helps us not just in a cost perspective, but also in, in sustainability, so sort of trying to, to reduce our carbon footprint. Okay. So then for, from a finance and, and a tech perspective then, obviously as we head into 2022, mm -hmm. similar questions that we kind of asked to Stuart and Mark. What, what do you see? What, what are your predictions? And then perhaps then how, how are VLE perhaps looking to, to differentiate yourselves? I think it will be, again, it's, it's further integration of our systems. It is to, to get better information, to get information quicker and to, to act upon it. And as, as Stuart said as well, you know, if, try something. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, move on. Don't dwell on it. Yeah, we all make mistakes. Yeah, but as long as you have better information, you can make better informed decisions and, and start changing quicker. Okay. Okay. No, thank you very much. So I think we have about 10 minutes left. Um, so if anyone has any questions for, for any of the panel or even myself, please, uh, please put your hand up. We can't see you probably because it's yes. um, bright light shining at us. But uh, if anyone has any questions, please let us know. I think we've got one here, Harry at the front. Well, reliable. <laughs> <coughs> My question is that we're seeing restaurants close for lunch 
close for dinner, reduced hours. But also hotels, many hotels are now closing Monday, Tuesday. I just would like to hear the panel's views on that going forward. Stuart, do you I, want to start with that? You, you, you mentioned something to me before in terms of occupancy yeah. and availability at one of your hotels. Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the, the critical elements is, is customer service, customer experience, you know, and, and that has to be key. If in a situation where we can't get the staff, we'd rather do a very good job and provide that customer experience rather than trying to do half a job and the customer walks away and has a terrible experience. You know, so, so clearly there is an urgent requirement for staffing in the hospitality industry and uh, only by kind of overcoming those challenges will you be able to provide the right service levels. But as a business, we, we probably have a preference to provide the right service and the right quality experience rather than just trying to grab every pound that, that comes, comes by, every possibility, and somebody walks away. In the longer term, that will do more damage to your reputation than your, your business prospects. Uh, similar, so restaurants is one example. We've got a, a specific hotel who housekeeping staff, we are actually limiting our inventory stock because we can't turn over the rooms quick enough, you know, which is out, outcry. But you know, that, that is the reality. We do not want to put our customers in a situation where they receive a poor experience. Thank you for the question. Thank you, yeah. Sir Alex Ferguson, for answering it so clearly. <laughs> Got another one over here. Yes, this is a question for Stuart. It just, um, you've got a range of, you said, different brands, so you have different PMS systems. I wonder how you, you talked about integrating those. Obviously, we've got a, a similar challenge. just wondered how you would sort of address that challenge, because obviously it's quite difficult when you've got all different systems. Yeah, so, so we're actually in the process at the moment of, of looking at that specific challenge. Uh, we've got a kind of project we think it will take about six months. Uh, however, we've been looking at vendors who can effectively take a feed from our multiple PMSs. We've got nine PMSs in our group. We're looking at a, a vendor who will be able to take a feed from those nine PMSs into a data warehouse uh, situation and then export backwards, which sounds a relatively simple process, but it's anything but. But what we're looking to get is, is one output, one consistent output, one consistent format into our business intelligence uh, tool called Cognos. Uh, and, and that is hopefully going to be our solution that will be ready uh, early in 2022. But it is definitely a challenge uh, you know, to try and get consistency of information and really get to the root of that information quickly. Sorry. Sorry. Please yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't hear the question. No, just uh, I know we should only probably be talking about sponsor. I just wondered which vendor it was you were using, but I don't know whether you're allowed to say. Uh, or... We've got a vendor called Omniboost, uh, okay. which is a relatively uh, small player, but they are uh, kind of unique in, the, in, in that space. Of they've, they've done it in other industries. Uh, they believe strongly that they can uh, replicate it in hospitality and using PMSs. So that's uh, the vendor we are engaging okay. with right That's now. really useful, really appreciate that, thanks. Yeah. More you like Oliver, aren't you? More? <laughs> you, th I really, you really ought to be better informed on this, Mr. President. How come you've got so many questions? You should know everything <laughs> yourself by now. I'd like to test the panel. Um, we talk um, and Clearly, HOSPA uh, are the masters of revenue management, but it's focused on rooms. I would like to hear the panel's views on um, revenue management in spas and in food and beverage, where I think there is an opportunity to improve profitability. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I yeah. just pick up one thing? I'm sorry, Mr. <laughs> President. But I'm just gonna, I, I have said for a long time, and any time I speak to HOSPA, I genuinely think uh, the hotel industry needs to really think about whether F&B is the right phrase or R&B. So if you're going to go and compete with restaurants and bars who are specialists at restaurants and bars, then really think about it as that. It isn't an add-on to your service. I I, my challenge back, if you like, would be if, if that is an opportunity, then treat it with the respect it deserves and really look at it as something separate from an add-on to your hotel rooms because the opportunity is definitely there. But, um, but it needs to be treated with that respect and focus uh, separately from the hotel operation. Yeah. 
I would also add to that, I think, spa space in particular and uh, room hire, maybe not the actual F&B cost, but room hire, definitely lend itself to revenue management. You know, the, the same principles, this limited space, depending on demand, you know, you should be applying revenue management principles to that space in the same way you apply to your room inventory. Yeah, I think we're slightly unique in the sense that our, most of our locations are either remote or all-inclusive, so it, it, the, 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 the sense of upselling or, or revenue management is a bit less than in the, the hotels that Stuart is operating. I think from our side as well, I think we're starting to see now customers looking to break down areas that they would normally drill down mm -hmm. to, you know, the setup, like you say, spas, restaurants, etc. We've even got one customer who's looking at their energy consumption, so sustainability in terms of how much lighting do they use in a bar or a certain area. So I think the, the levels of, that people are now actually really starting to look at is getting greater. Okay, we've got a few more minutes left. Any more questions? Don't feel obliged to use every last second. I'm sure we can find, <laughs> we can got, find a use got, for it elsewhere. I've got this nice clock here ticking yeah. in front of me. I just <laughs> think it's all right. <laughs> That's okay. If there are no further questions, I think, ladies and gentlemen, let's show our appreciation to the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.